Today, we will be showing you how to make a religious painting in the style of Fra Angelico. As you can see, I already applied the underdrawing, so we can start with the next step. Some people call it step Leto. It's basically the ground layer for the skin color. And we're using a green earth for this color. I prepared this with an egg, so we are working with egg tempera today. So, let's start. As always, the reference is in the description below. We are going to apply our letto. And um, we're going to apply this as even as possible, but since it's egg tempera and dries super quickly, uh, you might need to work fast. So we're mixing it with a bit of water because now it's too thick. And see when it gets the right consistency. So you might need to work a little fast with this. You'll see it in a minute because you'll see it dries so quickly. Just go over all the skin colors, the hair. Work quickly, go over the eyes. So apply it quite spontaneous and quickly. Once it's dry, you can paint on top of it again. That's no problem, but you have to let it dry. Some people like to apply this paint layer already with brush strokes, so small hatches, and other people like to apply it in several layers. It's up to you. What is the ground that you want to work with? I think this is okay for a nice result. So now I'm going to apply a blue layer, the undermodeling of the folds. Fra Angelico, perhaps, used a cheaper pigment than the expensive ultramarine that he would use for the later finishing layers. I'm now using a modern equivalent uh, for the cheaper underpaints. Again, I'm diluting this with a bit of water because you want to make a lighter paint. Uh, you want to see the under drawing through this layer so you can apply the folds easily. I think this is light enough. We'll see. Of course, you're trying to follow the lines of the underdrawing a bit. But remember, you're going to paint on top of it. So perfect is different. I'll show you. Once it's drying, you're going to take it off. Once you have applied the letto and the undermodeling, and it's been left to dry, you can continue with the next step. The next step is called Verdaccio. It's the muddy color that you will see in the shadows of your example. We're going to apply this with uh, several pigments. It's a combination of zinc white, ochre, and bone black that I'm using today. So we're looking for this muddy color. So white, ochre, So now I'm mixing the ochre, the white, and the black into a muddy color that you would expect to find outside. Here we go. Muddy, muddy. So, get your small brush and let's apply the hatching. If you apply the hatching, take a good look at your example. If you zoom in on this picture, you see that the uh, skin color and the verdaccio is built up with small hatchings next, next to each other. Small brush strokes. It's okay to leave a little bit of the green visible. And if the hatches are farther apart, it will look lighter from a distance. And if the hatches are closer to each other, it will look more um, 
it will look darker. The shadow will look darker. And of course, Fra Angelico used a finer brush than I do today. And the finer your brush strokes, the better your result. Uh, if you look at the eye, for instance, you see that the brush strokes continue with the lid of the eye. So here they go, this way. And I steam here in the corner of the eye, they go a different way. Almost cross hatching. That makes it even darker. And then, when you finish the details, don't forget to give the eye also this Verdaccio color. Now it's dried up, I can see the real colors, and I mixed a little more black to give more contrast to some of the uh, shadows. So, especially here in the nose, we need that. Now we're done with the Verdaccio, and we're going to continue with applying the skin color. We're going to apply the skin color, in three different hues. Those hues we're going to mix with a combination of reds, ochre and white. Starting with the ochre again. Titanium white, I'm going to apply it on the right side. Then I'm going to apply my zinc white because a combination of zinc and titanium will give a nice translucent and opaque skin color at the same time. And that's what we're looking for. And then last but not least, a lake pigment. This is a modern synthetic lake pigment. So, for the skin color, we're going to mix three different hues. The first one, is going to be dark. We're going to need red, but the red is very contagious, so not so much. And we're going to need more ochre than we are taking red, and a slight bit of white, which was already in my corner, so I'm just going to use this. This is a dark color. Then this we can use to make a lighter color. A little bit of titanium, a little bit of zinc. Yeah, and then we have our lightest color, almost highlight like titanium and zinc white. So we're going to make a transition from the shadow to the highlights in the skin tones. So right now, I want to continue with the mid-tones. Hmm. Let's see what I find from this. Now, we can continue to the highlight. And once you apply three hues, then you can go back and forth a bit to make a smoother transition, so to say. And obviously, Fra Angelico used a way finer brush than I did because when you stand in front of the painting, you can hardly see the brush strokes. It's amazing. So now we're going to continue with the details. 
uh, such as the mouth, the blush on the cheek and the eyes. First, the blush on the cheek. Don't use the red. Mix it with a little of the skin color because otherwise it will be too bright. Let's see how this blush looks on her. Go on top of it again with another color and correct it a bit. A little bit black. I'm adding to my palette. So you might think the color of the eye is white. It's not, as I stated previously with the Rembrandt, the color of the eye is actually a gray with some highlights in it. And where it's white, you just add a little bit of white. And here it's, I think, on this side. Now we're going to accentuate the eyes because she wears some kind of eyeliner. Now I'm taking my black and a little bit of ochre. And we're going to accentuate her eye a bit like this. And then the pupil. Here she comes. She really looks at us right now. We're going to do the same thing for the under eyelid, but I'm going to add a little bit more ochre. There's a little highlight here. Yeah, and it continues to the eyelid. So now I'm continuing with, the, with her lips with a pink. It's darker. So we finished her face and now we're going to continue with the folds of her robe. And we're going to focus ourselves on this beautiful part. First I'm going to do the blue folding, then the folding of the little nap on top. So we're going to make our palette first and foremost is white for the highlights. Zinc and titanium white. So let's add that. So, zinc, titanium, right. Then we're going to continue with a little bit of ochre. Last but not least, with the blues. Azurite, ultramarine. The folds are built up in thicker hatches and they build up from the most saturated color to a highlight, so to say. I don't mix black in my shadows here. I'm just using the saturated color of the ultramarine. It's the ultramarine. And I leave a bit of this color open as well. And if you paint, paint with the folds. Paint in the direction of the folds. So now we can continue to a lighter color. I'm taking a bit of zinc white and I'm mixing this with the ultramarine. Let's see what we get. And this should be our mid-tone, remember? So the highlight is even a bit lighter than the mid-tone. Not too light, 
because you want to make a clear distinction between this highlight and this highlight. So the highlight of the drapery for rope and the highlight of this little drapery. That's super, super expensive. So this is a good substitute. If you would continue the rope in this manner, you would have a very clear light and dark effect. So I think we're going to continue now with this small part of the drapery. So we're finishing the last parts of this part of the drapery. And now we're going to continue with this part. And you would say that it's not made out of hatchets. It actually is. If you look at it from very close by, you'd see that also this part consists of all kinds of small stripes. I'm going to do that with titanium white. Little bit of ochre. Make sure you take a close look at the reference for this part. It is really precise. Starting with the darkest color, and that's a um, to me, that's a combination of ultramarine and white. So we can use the color that we use for the drapery. I think these and these are too close in color. It needs to be whiter. So titanium is going to save my day. And a bit of ochre. Then I need this to make this a little bit darker. And of course, Fra Angelico did this in one turn. But we're not him yet. Yeah. The thinner your brush, the better this part goes. And of course, you leave the backgrounds to shine through a bit. Add a little bit blue to this too, to, uh, because it has a, a little shadow over here. So now I'm going to add the little dots again. Now to finish it off. Titanium white. So today I showed you all the steps to make a religious tempera painting. I showed you how to make a skin color and I showed you how to make drapery. And now you can continue with that yourself. I'm going to continue also. I'm going to continue making the background. And one little tip, if you can't gild, because that's a whole technique in itself, then use ochre to make a beautiful pattern. I think I will do that too today. Great lesson. Thank you very much, Lisanne. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed and doei doei.